Hi, and welcome to Jules Voto's Photo Focus. In my last couple videos, I talked about the Nikon F and the various meter prisms that were available for it, as well as some of the accessories. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Nikromat FTN, which was introduced in 1967. Now, it wasn't the first Nikromat. The first Nikromat came out in 1965. Actually, there were two of them. The FS, which had no meter and no mirror lockup, and the Nikromat FT, which had a full area averaging meter, and it also had an inconvenient method of setting the ASA opposite the maximum aperture of the lens. What you had to do, just like the Nikon Photomic T and Photomic TN finders for the Nikon F, you had to set the ISO, or ASA as we called it back then, opposite the maximum aperture of the lens. And every time you change lenses, if you went to a different maximum aperture, for example, from a 1.4 lens to a 2.8, you had to make that change on the ASA uh, setting. So uh, the Nikomat FTM actually was the first camera from Nikon, even before the Nikon FTN, to introduce semi-automatic indexing. And the way that worked is when you went to mount a lens, you set it to 5.6, placed it on the camera, and you will see the coupling prong on the lens engages the coupling pin on the camera. You mount the lens, and then you twist it to its minimum aperture, in this case f16, to its maximum, in this case 1.4, and then on the side of the camera, it might be a little difficult to see, there is a little red indicator just before you get to 1.2, indicating it's a 1.4 lens. If it was a 2.8 lens, that red indicator would be over here by 2.8. And what that does, it tells the camera, the metering system on the camera, what the maximum aperture of the lens is. Okay, so that was uh, a big improvement over the Nikromat FT. Um, the Nikromats do not have interchangeable screens, interchangeable finders, do not accept motor drive. So it was a simplified camera compared to the Nikon F. Uh, but it had a few features uh, for convenience, actually, that the Nikon F did not have. And one of the biggest, one of the things, one of the big complaints about the Nikon F was the removable back. You had to remove the back to change film. Well, with the Nikromat, you had a hinge back made it much easier. Also, the Nikromat has a copal square metal focal plane shutter that travels vertically, not horizontally, which gives you a faster sync speed. The Nikon F synced at 1 60th of a second with electronic flash. The Nikromat FTN and FT and FS sync at 1 1 25th of a second. Another, I'm going to go over all the features of the camera, but I just want to point out these differences, these advantages, actually, over the Nikon F. It also has, let me take this lens off so you can see this better, a proper mirror lockup. On the Nikon F, if you watch my video, you needed to waste the frame, press the shutter release, and waste the frame for the mirror to lock up. With the Nikomat, you just have this lever here on the left side, this little switch. Press it down, mirror lifts press it up, the mirror drops back down. Okay, so now let's just go over all the controls on the, on the Nikon mat. All right, get that lens back on there. Okay, so let's start on this side of the camera here. We have a depth of field preview button. Okay, when you press that, the lens, and we'll show you that there, I'll set it to 5.6. I'm going to press that button, and I hope you can see this, the lens stops down, right? So you could observe depth of field right on the focusing screen. We also have our frame counter here, okay? And the shutter release. Now this shutter release um, is threaded in the center here 
uh, with a female thread like a conventional shutter release button, but it also has the thread, the male thread, along the bottom, around the bottom there, to take Nikon's great AR2, yes, AR2 cable release. Okay, very well made. It also will take the um, AR1 soft shutter release, and that screws right in. These are not cheap. They're hard to find now, and I've seen them for $30 on eBay. But it just uh, gives you a little bit softer release. It's, it's a plastic, uh, it's plastic rather than the metal on the camera. Uh, the advanced lever, it's one stroke. Okay, with the F, you could do it in multiple strokes. It's just one stroke to advance film and advance the frame counter. You'll notice this red dot when the um, shutter, uh, when the uh, advanced lever is at this standoff position and the red dot is exposed, the meter is on. It also has here a film plane indicator, uh, which will come in handy if you're doing uh, macro work. On the other side of the camera, we have a uh, exposure uh, indicator here. When the needle is centered in that circle, you have achieved proper uh, exposure. Uh, also has a rewind knob and crank. Okay, um, these cameras took um, one 1.35 volt mercury battery, which are no longer available, but you can get uh, substitute batteries. We have our um, tripod socket here and the rewind button. So you'll press this in when it's time to rewind film to release the internal sprocket. Now, there are a couple features on this camera which are not the greatest. One, well, let's just come back over here for a second. Here is your shutter speed indicator. Okay, there's a little lever here around the lens mount, and that is how you, uh, that is how you set your shutter speed, it's, and they go from one to one one thousandth of a second plus B. Okay? Now, actually, I, I think this is pretty convenient. When you're holding the camera, your left hand is usually supporting the lens, and you're very close here to the shutter speed uh, lever, and it's pretty easy to change them rather than, have, rather than having to come up top and turn the dial. Okay? But the one, probably the worst feature of this camera is the way you set the ASA, ISO, ASA. Um, it is around the lens mount as well. And there's this little plastic piece here that you have to hold, keep the shutter speed dial from moving, and then take a strong fingernail and try to, try to set this opposite your ASA. So it is a little difficult, it's probably the worst feature of the camera. Uh, one other thing on the back of the camera here, this is the eyepiece. And um, you'll notice it's round like the uh, Nikon, the later Nikon F finders. Um, it's plastic though, it's hard plastic. And I'm an eyeglass wearer and it will scratch your glasses. So there was not a rubber eye cup that was available that fit around it. However, I found a better solution and that is this eyepiece, which was, is actually still available, which is made for the Nikon FM3, FM2, FA, and FE2. And that just screws in replacing the, this plastic one, and it's going to protect your glasses. Okay. Now, this camera also took, does not have a hot shoe, as you can see, but it does take an accessory shoe, cold shoe that fits on the back, and then the eyepiece, the stock eyepiece that came with the camera will hold it in place. So once you mount your flash, you then need to plug it in to the PC outlet, and there on the side of the camera, there's one marked M and one marked X. You're not gonna worry about the M, that was for flash bulbs, but make sure you, if you're using flash with this camera, you plug, plug it into the X. Now, as far as metering is concerned, um, a lot of the meters on these older cameras with CDS cells do not work. This camera has a center weighted meter which concentrates 60% of its sensitivity in the 12 millimeter 
central area of the focusing screen. The central, very central portion of the focusing screen is a micro prism, uh, as opposed to the screen that came with the original Nikon F, which was a split image screen. Um, You also, in the viewfinder, have an indication of your shutter speed. Um, you also, of course, have the uh, meter needle indicator in the viewfinder. Um, these cameras were manufactured from 1967, the Nikon FTN, until 1975, when it was replaced with the Nikon FT2 which basically was um, very similar, except that it had the Nikon F2 Cosmetics, so it had a plastic tip um, advanced lever, it had a plastic top on the depth of field preview, it also had a plastic self timer, and um, it had the K screen, which is the screen with a split image in the center, and then a micro prism collar on the outside, it also had a built-in hot shoe. Okay, and then the final model of the Nikkor mat um, was the FT3, introduced in 1977. And um, the only difference between it and the FT2 was the fact that it took AI lenses. They eliminated this semi-automatic indexing system and went to a automatic indexing system. Okay, oh, one more thing I should add as far as the self-timer. The self-timer operates differently than the Nikon F. So once the shutter is cocked, you set the self-timer and there's no button here. On the F, there's a button. On the Nikon mat, you have to press the shutter release and the camera will fire when it times down. Okay, so that's it for the um, Nikomat FTN. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you didn't, I need to know that too. Um, I'm trying to improve this channel and your constructive criticism will help. My next video, which may be delayed, I've been trying to get one out every week. How it's possibility it will be delayed a couple weeks, but it will be on my favorite mechanical camera of all time, the Nikon F2. And we'll go over the various metering uh, prisms that uh, were available for it. So thanks for watching, and I will talk to you next time.